to the Toyota Scoreboard Show here in week nine. Bobby Latmore along with Myron Guyton and Chris Guyton. And gentlemen, Friday night was a great game, was it not? I mean, I listened to it on the radio because I was at the Brookwood game, and you guys would sound like you guys were having fun and going back and forth a little bit. It was. It was very exciting. Uh, I learned something. Don't cheer for the wrong team on the wrong sideline. Oh, <laughs> yeah. really? Yes, you I learn did. that real oh, quick. Especially Lee County. Especially yeah. Lee County. Yeah. Lee County's yeah. a rough, rough <laughs> place. I mean, yeah. they care about their sports, period. And you should know that from soccer, man. I mean, yeah. they're rough with soccer also. Yeah, and Jesse and I are not small guys, but they had a few guys that were like, hey, you need to take it to the other side. looking at yeah. the numbers, really? yeah. Wow. You, know, only you guys were cheering. Yes. You guys were it letting, was, your, letting yeah. your colors fly a little yeah. bit Friday night, huh? It was two of us, and it was like 100 of them. So we got quiet. You got to think, and they haven't been in that situation. Six and old, you know, knowing that they're playing for right. the region. Right. And then you guys over there, you know, deflating them. I'm quite sure they weren't very happy. No, so. not at all. You know, one thing I saw, you know, we saw the game last night. One thing you guys talked about, especially you, Myron, you were up in the box. You were doing a play-by-play -play with Roger. Um, they go, they, they score the final touchdown, go up 44 to 35. They're within, or 41 to 35. They're within six points. Correct. And they kicked it deep. Yeah, and I don't I think, I, I, but I don't think that was, I think the coach had other plans. He did, I believe you he know, right. did. I think he kind of messed it up. And I don't know what, I don't know what the kicker, I don't know what was told prior to, either kick it into the end zone, start them deep at the 20, make sure they start at the 20, or pooch it to where they can have a chance to recover. But after that, you saw Coach Fabrizio on the sideline. Oh, he went off. You know, but I talked to one of the fans afterwards, and he said that this is a kicker that has always pooch punt, mm -hmm. pooch kick. Mm -hmm. And if you're used to doing that, and then all of a sudden you ask him to, to kick an onside kick, you know, he, he, he did what he knew, and, and, I mean, he kicked a little deeper. But if you look right. at the other onside kicks, were they really onside kicks? Oh, well, I mean, not really. I mean, when you can yeah. fair catch onside kicks, right. then you're not doing them right. Right. You it's got to hit the ground first. Right, because you, you want that awkward bounce. Exactly. You know, he never got that bounce. He always kicked them up, and I'm thinking, what is he doing? I mean, right. you know, I mean, you're surprising him. He's surprised me they did onside kicks early. Mm -hmm. But then, you know. Well, if you think about it, earlier in the game, he squibbed one. The squib looked better than the onside kick approach. I mean, that's him. So we don't know what's squib and what's, you know, we have no idea what, of what the game plan was. Of all times, kick it to Adam, because Adam brought it out to the 40 mm -hmm. on that return. So great field position for Thomasville. And even if Thomas, even if Lee County stops him, Thomasville's going to punt it deep inside Lee County territory with only a, a less than a minute left. Right. I'm, it, was, it was a tough decision. I, I can see why Coach Fabrizio got a little upset on that sideline. Because it shocked me. When, when I saw the ball go deep, I, first thing I thought was, wow, he's showing a lot of faith in his defense. Mm -hmm. yeah. That has already given up 100 points here. I mean, right. Well, the first thing I did, I looked over at the coach. The first thing I did when he kicked that, I, see, I looked to see. Now, is the that reaction? Right, because I didn't, I, there's no way that you're kicking it deep. You know, in this situation. When well, you, you were saying that. Back. You were thinking, yeah, I'm saying, saying why, that. why are you doing that? You know, so I looked at his reaction, and I'm saying, oh. I don't think that's what he's supposed to have done. I mean, you could, should have seen the kicker. He actually walked behind the bench. <laughs> he tried and the coach, to oh, he tried to, right, he tried to avoid him. <laughs> hey, he went and got him. You know, hey, he let him have it. Uh, man. You yeah. know, but but I, I, not just that play, though. Man, I looked at their defense. And I felt like who are the defensive coordinators? He gave them them points, unnecessary points. I mean, because you're in a situation where you know if they break the line of scrimmage, they got some guys that can take it to the house. Right. But he kept bringing his safety. So they were at one time, they were like six yards deep, almost like linebackers. Mm -hmm. And I'm thinking, man, if they break the line of scrimmage, you're There's not no going to stop them. Right? You're not going to stop them. You had 11 like, men in the box. Well, that's right. what happened. Well, that's what happened, box, too, yeah. with Adam on that one long run where he lost a shoe. Yeah. I mean, he had everybody in the box, and Adam broke one tackle, broke another, and he was gone. Yeah, but you know, he had one guy run him down. I think if Adam had a shoe, I don't think they would have run him down. You know, which. And plus, I think he might have scored on that play. He, I mean, he leaned yeah, out. I think yeah, that was a questionable yeah. call on that play. Yep. You know, but I just didn't think they called the right defense. I look at him and say, man, why are they playing this defense? You know, you know, you want that more bend, don't break. And, you know, we played in that defense a lot. Mm -hmm. And right. therefore, you, you create turnovers because, you know, most offenses, they don't have the patience to get five yards, five right. yards, five yards. They want to go for the big one. Right. You let them go for the big one. When they do, you make them pay for it. Exactly. Well, they didn't do that. You know, they played too tight inside the box. Yep. And Central said, hey, if you're going to give that to us, you know, we're going to flat out beat you. But all in all, Lee County's a good football team, are they not? Oh, well, offense, yes. I think yes, they can play with anybody. They offense. can play. No question defense about it. They, they proved something. Something Friday oh, yeah. night. Oh, Whether yeah. the loss or not, Lee County is for real. Oh, yeah. No question at I all agree. this year. I'll tell you what, guys, we got a lot to talk about, so we're going to take a quick break, and when we come back, we'll talk about the rest of the scores here in Southwest Georgia here on a Toyota Scoreboard Show sponsored by Thomasville Toyota.
Fresh trade-ins everywhere right here at Thomasville Toyota, folks. Look at this Yukon, absolutely gorgeous. Tan leather interior, got the wheels. $9,900 at Thomasville Toyota. 07 Sienna minivan, perfect color, clean, also $9,900. And here's a real SUV, Nissan X-Terra. Sale price $9,900, make it $8,900. Tell them I said, Thomasville Toyota, where you drive home happy. At Farm Credit, our roots run deep in this rich Georgia soil. We are the nation's leading provider of credit to farmers and farm businesses. And we know what it takes to grow your business. We've closed more loans on the hood of a pickup truck than some bankers will in a lifetime. We're proud of our history. Prouder still to finance the dreams of farmers, landowners, and agribusinesses. We're Farm Credit. We're here to help you grow. Welcome back, everybody, to the Toyota Scoreboard Show, sponsored by Thomasville Toyota. We film it every Tuesday morning here on the cool channels and guys here at the dealership, and we got, you know, there's a lot of people around. Always, man. It's Always traffic. good stuff, isn't it? But that's good. It traffic is. Traffic is Driving good. home happy, baby. That's right. You got to love it. You got to love it. Let's talk football. Big game again Friday night for Cairo. They took on an Albany team that was supposed to be pretty good at the start of the year. A lot of expectations high for Albany this year. Um, they got a good quarterback up there. Just didn't know what else was going to happen with Albany. They've been up and down all year, but they ran into a a stinging Cairo defense the other night. Yeah, which is, you know, has been there all year. Right. Um, I think what you're seeing now is, you know, it's region time. Mm -hmm. You know, so it's time to step it up. And they're they doing what they need to do. You know, they're making uh, turnovers and giving the ball back to the offense. You know, three and outs, whenever they need to give it back to the offense. And the offense seems to be taking advantage of it. Well, one thing, too, is P.J. Davis is now more so getting more of that offense side into it. You know, he's been to defense, heart and soul for the defense all year. But they got lucky because they got a guy back from for defense this last time. Um, uh, Webster, I believe his name is, he came back for Cairo. He's been hurt all year, but he's been a senior defensive back or a defensive lineman that they've needed tremendously. Their defense was already good. Right. And now with him back, you've got an opportunity for Davis to move back to offense a little bit to give him a break. Right. It showed 251 yards and three touchdowns. Wow. So that offense was cranking with P.J. in the backfield. Uh, Friday night. Wow. So, but Cairo wins 42 to seven over Albany, 4 0 in the, in the region. Yeah, and then they're peaking at the right time. I mean, mm -hmm. this is, you know, most guys say after your break, you hopefully have your guys healthy. But I say, you know, going into the end of the season, if your guys are healthy and you make it to the playoff, then you have a really, really good chance mm -hmm. to make something happen, to make some noise, they say. Right. They took their lumps on the head early in the season, uh, really playing some teams that, that they were outmatched by. <laughs> but they play well against those teams. So I, I expect nothing different from them in region play. I expect them to be strong. Also for Cairo, sophomore Jeremiah Hill getting his turn to play a little bit. He scores two touchdowns. He goes 114 on the ground as well. So Cairo's running the ball very efficiently here the last couple of weeks. Well, wow, that's good when you balance. You know, you have a couple of guys that can, uh, can carry the load. You know, that way they just can't key in on, on, on one player. And they're, they're starting to do that Florida read option. Spread. A little bit with Donald Thomas because he can run. Yeah. He's a good athlete. He can run the ball. But now he's got P.J. Davis in the backfield. It looks like Jeremiah Hill stepping up as one of the runners over there for Cairo. It looks like things are happening. Yeah, and I think it's key, um, what you said about Thomas. I mean, this is a kid that's been around, but he hadn't played. Right. And I think the more that he gets in, in familiar with that offense, the better things are starting to roll because uh, starting the season, they didn't put a lot of points on the board. But right. you can see now that it seems like he's really starting to, to yes. understand what to do and who to give it to. Who he's getting players comfortable are. with that offense, with who he needs to give the ball to. He gives right. it to the playmakers, and it's been it's been very productive here, especially in region. Because yeah. you don't have to do it all himself. Yeah, and with them running that spread style offense like Florida runs, it gives them a little bit more balance also because you can still run out of there, and that's what they're wanting to do. But it opens up your play action pass too because you have to honor that option out of that. And he threw for 58 yards this week, not as much as they've been throwing in the past. A couple they tried. I'm pretty sure they tried a couple long ones. We didn't see the uh, replay yet, but uh, I, I guarantee you, you're right, Chris. Exactly right. It opens up and makes it more balanced. It opens things up. If they just like you know, the, with the veer, peep, they're going to put a 10, 11 in the box. You can chunk it right Eight over four. the top of the, of the safeties and the linebackers, and you've got a nice gain for a nice pass. Right. Mm -hmm. That's what Cairo's doing. Everybody's starting with, with Davis running the way he is, and Hill running the way he is, and you don't know if Thomas is going to run. He can pass at any time, and he's a good quarterback to where he can throw a lot. So, Cameron's, Cameron's, I think Cameron's going to go pretty far in the playoffs this year. Yeah, a good threat. 
no question about it. Um, let's talk about another game, uh, another big game in Region 1, 2A this last Friday night. Early County and Thomasville, a heartbreaker for Thomasville. They were in the game the whole way, losing 17 to 14. Another 17-14 game this year. What is up with this number? No, that's going to be very common. Early County and a bunch of them, Bainbridge and a bunch of them, but uh, Thomasville losing on a 25-yard field goal with four minutes left. They could not regain. They could not get their offense going for the in the fourth quarter to catch up and get in get in field goal range for their kicker to at least tie the game up. They go down 17-14. That hurts them bad in Region 2A. Oh yeah, and they seem to be having the opposite problems with Cairo. Uh, the offense just haven't gotten going yet. I mean, you know, they're still trying to find that piece to the puzzle. Defensively, I think they play well. They play well right. all season, as well as can be expected uh, with the schedule that they had to mm -hmm. play. But the offense just, just keeps sputtering. It sputters. But, yeah. you know, they've got good points. They've got, you know, they, they're high one series. They're low on another series. They shoot themselves in the foot. They gain oh, a great play, and they right. get a penalty to come back on another. They're just not consistent. Yeah, just exactly. can't win. So. Cal King runs for 42-yard touchdown to open the game up. Wow. Cal King. Blazing fast, Cal King. Cal King. That, that, that Cal tall, King. skinny white kid ran 42 yards for a touchdown. Wow. Bootleg or something. I mean, he's, he's run the ball very well these last few weeks. Maybe that's another dimension they add next year going into it. Because right now, I think with them losing the early, to Early County Friday night, that hurts them significantly. They're 1-2 and two now in that region. Early County is in the driver's seat for that fourth and final playoff spot for beating Thomasville. Unless something miraculously happens here, Thomasville looks like their season may be over. Yeah, and I think they're basically working for, for the future. I mean, they have mm -hmm. a young ball club, um, and they would love to have gotten into the playoffs, but there's still a lot of good things that they can, um, can do for this season. Right. And I think if they can figure out, hey, you know, you know, what style do we need to do on offensively here uh, with the players that we have and the players that we're going to have for the future. You know, King, King's King, young, right? He's King, sophomore, right? sophomore. So, I mean, that's a big, that's a big plus for them coming in the – in the future. I mean, I have to agree with you guys. Right now, they're playing for pride. They, they, the playoffs are a long way off for them. So mm -hmm. you play for pride, you work on some things now, and you plant some seeds for the future. I mean, statistically, they're not done as far right. as getting into the playoffs. Right. But Don't misunderstand me on that. They're, right. they're, it's hurting right yeah, now. Yeah, it's, Their it's loss Friday night hurt them significantly because now Early County, like I said, sets them up for that fourth and final spot for the playoffs. But, you know, Cal King, let's talk Cal King. He ran the ball 13 times for 58 yards. One was a 52-yard run for a touchdown. But, you know, he's, throw, he's still throwing the ball. He's 6 for 13 for 129 yards. Did throw one pick, but, you know, there's another turnover. Right. right. So you, you, you cut, you, they're cutting down the turnovers, and it's noticeable because the last few ball games they've been in the game. You know, I'm going to tell you one thing right now. Against Cook, who's one of the better teams in, in right. the 2A class, they were 3-3 three, three at halftime. Every game, though, the first half, they play with all the teams. You Every know, single except, one of them. Except for uh, the Yellow Jackets, the opening game. Yeah. But other than that, they've been in all these games. It's just that they can't find a way the second half to win the game. And just, the only thing I can see is it's got to be experience. They just don't have the experience because they're making mistakes at key times. You know, right. Like right. you say, one interception, but when did that one interception occur? It happened know? in the fourth quarter. So, so I mean, it was, it, it was you know, just it, they're learning. They're young, they're learning. But you got to feel for guys like Mario Cherry. Now, Mario Cherry is a senior this year, is he not? Yes. He is a senior this year. So you got to feel for guys like that because he's good. Oh, he's a workhorse. Right. I mean, he is right. the heart and soul of that, both offense and defense of that Thomasville team. He's definitely going to go play college football next year. Hopefully it'll be a little bit better results as far as a win-loss thing. Yeah. But, you know, as far as, you know, determination and what he's doing this year, he's doing a great job. So you just feel for guys like that on that Bulldog team because they've got a good team. Yeah, and, and, and the thing is you hope that guys like that do move on. I mean, because that's some positive that comes right. out of a, a tough season like that. Right. I mean, because it seems like every year they do put somebody uh, out into Division I. Mm -hmm. uh, they have some key players to come out of Thomasville High. Always. Thomasville High always has those players, and they're always, you know, Coach Marsh does a great job of getting that team up and ready to go. They just lose gas in that third and fourth quarter. Okay. And it's just heartbreaking sometimes. Let's talk a little bit. Uh-oh. Yeah, let me get my jacket yeah, on. Let me get up here. Coming up. Mm, Let's get it up. GISA, Let's get it up. GISA Brookwood. We all picked Terrell Academy. I know. <laughs> I mean, that's what we need to do. We need to go against them. You know, there you go. That's what we need. Yeah, motivation for them. Absolutely. Brookwood winning Friday night, 19 to 8. I got to give props to the little Latmore. He had a pick in that game. He had a good game. I'll tell you what, I was very proud. I was very proud of Brookwood coming back from a heartbreaker against South Georgia. They should have won that game, no question about it. I think a lot of execution, a lot of questionable 
calls. We had talked about that last prior to last week. But this week, Brookwood gets back on track. And they stay in the playoff hunt in that GISA uh, region. We'll see that here in a little bit, too. But Brookwood wins 19-8 to over Terrell Academy. Keeps him alive for the playoffs You this said year. Lil Latmore got a pick, right? He got a pick. So baby. he bought my video. He bought your video. <laughs> Did you give him some, uh, some him pointers some in that, pointers, some tips? Yeah. There you go. But, uh, you know, it, it's funny, though. Terrell Academy came out throwing the ball. They threw all over the field. That could have hurt them. That didn't. You know, they, they stayed in the game. They, they moved the ball on Brookwood. One thing, you know, Myron, you talk about this all the time, the bend but don't break. That's right. I mean, you know, you don't mind giving up some plays. That's right. And they gave – Brookwood gave up plays. And the Terrell Academy uh, had a bunch of turnovers inside their red zone to give Brookwood an opportunity to stay in this game. But if Terrell Academy, you know, it, it, I, I, they, they compete, they make those plays, they don't turn it over, it could be a different ball game. Brookwood just did enough to win, yeah. again. But it's surprising, though. Win. I mean, I think it's great that they didn't just drop their heads after right. the loss to the prior week. Absolutely. Because they could easily say, hey, we're just out here and let's just go through the motions. But it seemed like they still, the coach have found a way to still get them prepared mm -hmm. uh, for the game. Because we talked about, you know, hey, the coach got to make some better yep. decisions right. and some of the plays. But obviously he did some things right. He went back and he corrected some things. Just enough. Just enough. You know, we had a bunch of turnovers. Brookwood created a bunch of turnovers. Now, I'm going to tell you something. It, for uh, smaller schools to play, the helmets were being racked Friday night. I mean, I was, I, mine got into a couple of them. I'm like, is he going to get up? <laughs> you always have that worry as a parent. But, uh, you know, he, he fought. They all fought hard. They worked hard all week last week. So, hey, congratulations to the Warriors getting one what, on what the What did they all say? What did Little little more say after the game? Oh, he mean? was pumped. He was ready to go. He didn't want to talk to me. He had other things to do with his buddies. They were going out. So they oh, were like, well, yeah, we're going to go celebrate. That's I'll talk good. to you later, Dad. Yeah, but uh, he had a great time talking to him on Saturday. I mean, he everything was great. I mean, he was – the whole team was so fired up and okay. pumped up about it. That makes you excited, doesn't it? I mean, that's why I, you're, I love to be around this, you know, just to see the atmosphere and the way the kids respond, Yep. Uh, especially when they, they have a big win. So. Oh, yeah. Riding that wave. Oh, yeah. Sticking out the chest around town. Well, this was, a, this was a win that they had to have. If they wanted to make the playoffs, they were 0-2 going into this region game. If they wanted to even have a chance for the playoffs, they, they had, had to win this game Friday night. Right. And they did. Because next week they may not win. They may not put a point on the board. And I hate to say that, Brookwood, but you guys are young going up against a fully senior team at Valwood who killed Westwood the other night 48 to 14. The wow. Westwood team. Wow. Wow. There's no more streak. <laughs> no. Wow. That second streak got killed. And, and 40, I think we 48 to eight. It's 48 to 18 Valwood over Westwood. Unbelievable. Wow. We said that was going to be a good game, but, it, I, I mean, that's not a good game. That's a good yeah, game for Valwood. For Valwood it was, yeah. not wow. Westwood. Westwood could not But they're undefeated. The Were they undefeated? They're number one in the state. Right, right. right. They're number one okay. in GISA in the state for Class 2 for we'll see why. GISA. So, it, absolutely. Wow. Ashley Henderson, a good friend of mine, used to coach at Valdosta, is a head coach over at Valwood, and he did a good job getting some players to come in. I'll give him that much. He did a good job, but uh, – Brookwood faces them next week, but Westwood, oh, they could not move the ball. They didn't score their 18 points until the fourth quarter. But that's what it is when you play against a great team, you know. It just seemed like you're having problems. The problem is the team across from you just a little bit better. Ooh, yeah. big time. I mean, they ran all over Westwood. And it wasn't so much passing. It was a running attack that really beat oh, them up. it just powered them. It wow. just powered them all down. How many down rushing yards? Long. You know, how many rushing yards? Uh, let me go back here and wow. look. The Page kid, Kari Page for Valwood, ran 48 had 48 touches for 131 yards. So he had 48, 48 touches. touches. Oh, my goodness. They, yes. they, did, they ran it. Ooh. Yes. Well, he's on the average in less than three yards of carry then, huh? Well, they yeah, did. They you know, definitely stuck to the game plan. I mean, <laughs> they, it was there. It wow. was there. And another, and, and another deal over there, I don't know if you remember, a couple back in the early 80s, John Lastinger, quarterback at University of Georgia, uh, right after Buck Ballou. He was a quarterback uh, that – Took over after Buck Baloop. His son is the quarterback at Valwood this year. So uh, a lot of legacy the going on there. Huh? Pedigree yeah. going on for Valwood. He threw. He had nine to ten passes for 120 yards. I mean, he had he only missed one pass that night. But they only threw ten times. Also, they needed to. All right. So I mean, but you give a kid 48 percentage? touches. That's a lot of touches, man. You so said he was nine of ten. Yeah. Yeah, nine of ten. Okay. Ninety percent. Yep. So he's there. I mean, it's, it's you know, depending. And he only, you know, he didn't throw for that much. I mean, he threw for 110 yards, but still, I mean, nine catches. I mean, he's averaging $9. 10 yards plus a, 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 a catch. catch. So, so that, that, 
you know, they're, they're First rolling. First down every That's throw. Right. They're That's rolling. Right. They're rolling. So Valwood comes to Brookwood next week. Westwood start, has to start another streak next week wow. as they play SGA. And that's going to be our game of the week next week here on the Cool Channels. We're going to head back up to Damascus next week. Westwood playing at SGA. The reason is, guys, everybody's out of town. Thomasville's yeah. off. Packers are going over to Coffee County. Uh, Central's going up to Columbus. Bainbridge is going up to Columbus. So we don't have anybody in town to play. So we got GISA football again next week, Westwood at SGA. We may have some highlights from the Valwood-Brookwood game as well during that game. So we may break it up. We'll see what happens. But let's take a quick break here on the Toyota Scoreboard Show. When we come back, we'll finish out some more scores here in southwest Georgia. This is so easy. Shopping from home, from your office, from your phone at thomasvilletoyota.com. Shop for brand new Toyotas or look at hundreds of pre-owned vehicles. Get approved in seconds with one click. And during business hours, live chat with one of our internet specialists. So shop easy at the happy place, thomasvilletoyota.com. Thomasville Toyota, where you have home happy. Sunbelt Trophy on East Jackson Street is your one-stop shop for all your celebration needs. Now, just for high schools, check out our sister company, DiscountVarsityAwards.com, where you'll find amazing discounts on beautiful full-color awards custom designed for your school. Check us out at DiscountVarsityAwards.com or call 229-228-1187. Only at Sunbelt Trophy in Thomasville. Welcome back, everybody, to the Toyota Scoreboard Show, sponsored by Thomasville Toyota. Bobby Latmore along here with Myron Guyton and Chris Guyton. And guys, let's talk Bainbridge football. Very hard-fought battle. But the Cats pulled one out last Friday night against Hardaway. They win 24 to 19. So the Cats pulled a rabbit out of the hat? The Cats pulled a rabbit out of the hat. And let me tell you what <laughs> saved them. B.J. Cheatham intercepts a pass on the three-yard line with three seconds left. Linebacker. He's been, he's playing been well for them. All yeah, he's, the whole he's been year. the staple of their he's defense. He's been everything season. for that defense for Bainbridge. Yeah. But what does that say? I mean, you mentioned it before the break. They're struggling on offense. Well, they are struggling. I mean, in games where, I mean, we're sitting here talking about they pull one out. That shouldn't be a game where they, you know, I mean, it should be dominated from right. start to the finish. Don't right. you expect for a team that's a contender? You know, and like I said, they're contenders or they're pretenders. Um, right now, I mean, Bainbridge is just not showing me a lot uh, on the offensive side of the ball. My nephew's the offensive coordinator, but I, I, I... Well, they scored 24 points. I mean, they did get 24 points. But against a team but, that you expect them to, to, to blow out. Uh, well, oh, that's true. But Hardaway's been fighting hard all year long. Well, against, except against Central. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Never and, mind. <laughs> but that's who they're comparing themselves to. I mean, right. Bainbridge is comparing themselves to, to the Thomas County Yellow Jackets. And if you're going to compare yourself to them, then that's who people are going to look at and say, oh, you know, what did Central do against... Uh, or Hardaway. What does mm -hmm. Central do against, you know, and, and that's the comparison Right now, Central is the benchmark that everyone's measuring themselves to in that region. Right. I mean, you're going to be the best, you got to beat the best. Well, it, starts, know, so. it didn't start out too well for Bainbridge, all right? Opening kickoff, 92-yard kickoff return for a touchdown for Hardaway. So Bainbridge is already backed up against the wall, 7 nothing. Next play, though, they showed a little bit of heart and drove 84 yards, 10 plays for their matching touchdown, 7-7. Seven, seven. Then it stayed that way for a long time until uh, they scored uh, two field goals, going twelve to seven at halftime. Right. But that seemed to be what Bainbridge does. I mean, the game that we watch, what do they do? The opening drive, they drive it down. I mean, they just yeah. we were like, hey, uh, against Cairo, we were like, oh man, Bainbridge has a great offense. I mean, they had the bye week. Then after that, it just Fizzled you know, out. yeah, for for two or three well, quarters, we sitting there. Why you is know, that? Is it because of the adjustments on the defense, or is it just because you just get stagnant and complacent on offense? See, that's why I think it's. The, the players. I really think that their players just don't have that heart that you need to have a championship caliber team. Right. It's like they, they haven't bought into the system. The system's been in place long enough for them to get it. Right. But they have to accept it. They have to buy into it to, to make it work. Yeah. Last week, Bainbridge losing to Harris County. Harris County's kind of been a, kind of a little bit of a surprise. They're not, I mean. Oh, they blew out somebody this, this weekend. I mean, who do they play? Uh, they play Northside. Yeah. Then they blew it because I was like, man, maybe Harris, Harris County a little County better. Harris played Northside Columbus. Maybe. They beat them 48 to nothing. Yeah, I said, maybe they're a little better than, you know, we were giving them credit for. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, they're number two in the region right now. Harris County, it's Central, and then Harris County, then Bainbridge. Um, but, you know, Bainbridge is still fighting for their life in that division. So, it's, and no, Hardaway's third, Bainbridge is fourth. I'll have to go back and check. It's, I'll check. I'll check. We're co it's coming Lee up County, here in a little bit. Lee, yeah, Lee County, is Lee County there? Lee? Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, Lee's in the you know, 
I'm just trying to guess it off the top of my head. Let's go back and look at the region real quick <laughs> to make sure so Bobby yeah, doesn't make any second. more mistakes. Yeah, Bainbridge should be fighting for that third spot. Bainbridge is fighting for the fourth spot yeah, right they're now for because of the overall deal. They've already lost two. They've lost two. Um, in that region, let's talk it. Thomas County Central's 3-0. and Harris County's 2-0. and Lee County now is 1-1. One and one. Bainbridge is 1-2. and two. So they still got to play Lee County. Bainbridge does. They got by North. They got Northside Columbus this week, which should be a blowout. They they got by Hardaway, but they still have. Uh, they lost to Harris County. Now who's number three then? Harris County number, number three. three. Lee County's number three because well, of the and loss. Two was Harris County's two and zero in the well, region. But, but Harris County haven't played the Yellow Jackets yet, have they? Who? They play, they, play to, they play Friday. They play right. Friday night. So they still right. get a real part yes. of their season right. still. I mean, they still got some teams to play. So Bainbridge's I, been through that. I think the, the pecking order there is going to be Thomas See, County, Lee County. Uh, Bainbridge and Bainbridge Harris. Third. Bainbridge is going to be third. Yeah, Bainbridge. Bainbridge. If they keep playing hard, though. Well, Harris still got to play the Yellow Jackets. Uh, yeah, and Lee County. In Lee County. So that's going to, I mean, that's two but losses isn't, there. Isn't Lee County going to give Bainbridge the third loss in the region? Lee County's going to give Bainbridge the third loss, but I mean, Harris County's going to lose I don't know if they're going to beat Bainbridge now because Bainbridge key is their defense, right. and their key is their offense. But Lee and, County's uh, explosive. And, well, but Bainbridge got a pretty good defense. Okay. I mean, and that's the key. Is Bainbridge, Bainbridge's strength is, is, is Yellow Jackets' weakness, which is their, their secondary. Okay. Their linebackers and their secondary is their strength. So I think Lee County's going to be playing into their strength. Uh, so I think it's going to be an advantage for, for Bainbridge. The key is can Bainbridge's offense roll on that subpar Lee County defense. Which, 17 or more points can win this game for Lee County. Well, let's talk about that here in a little bit. But first, let me get back to the uh, to the uh, Hardaway game. Damon Bowie did have had a good game. He came, he had 15 carries for 152 yards and a score. Terry Lewis, who was back, who was didn't play against Harris County last week, he's back this week against Hardaway. He made up for things: 16 carries for 174 yards and two scores. Only 16 carries, Only man. 16 he's not, carries. Both of those together is, yep. is less than a. That's the 48. Know, 31. <laughs> that's 31 carries. Less than the 48 from Bowel <laughs> wow. that the kid carried. So, you know, they got, you know, they've got some, I don't know if there's issues there or not, but they scored 24 points. They did a good job. Yeah. What I liked about them was after the opening kickoff, they got the drive and they, they the drove Americans. it and matched it. Yeah. They answered the call. And that's what you look for Hardaway, in a good right. team, right? Hardaway punched them in the face. They came back and they punched Hardaway in the face. They got even. So round one and round two went to both teams. Round three, round four, and five, and six, you know, that's, We'll have to look at that later on down the road. Different. But Bainbridge got away with one. They needed this one tonight to get a win in the region. They, you know, they're there. So we'll see how things pan yeah, they out. They keep chipping, chipping. You know, the thing is, though, we're just looking for that, that spark to turn into a full-blown fire any time, and they just haven't done it yet. So. They, and I mean, they have time, about, though. They've got plenty of they have time. time. They've got, you know, we've got they got four here. more weeks left in the season. Yeah, playoffs not here yet. So, I mean, it's not over yet. So, But it's coming down here to the nitty-gritty, and it's going to get very tight coming down for Bainbridge. They're either going to be three or they're going to be four. They're not going to be one or two. Right. But you, well, unless they just have a miraculous game against Lee County to where it vaults them up. Because Lee County lost to Central. If they lose to Bainbridge, Bainbridge has an opportunity to go up to that second spot. Yeah. I mean, you got to lose nice. when the season the started now. I mean, I think that Bainbridge and Central was the two teams that we everybody thought. expected to be right. the best two. We thought. Which I don't think that's changed. I still think those are the best two teams in the region. Lee County, I mean, they play well against the, the, the Yellow Jackets. Now, you got to think now, there was a 14-point lead there at one point where the Yellow Jackets could have put them away, mm -hmm. and they didn't. Um, they had a, a mistake on special teams. Mm -hmm. They kind of let them get back into this ball right. game. If that mistake on special teams didn't happen, then all of a sudden I think, you, you know, it would have been a little different game. Uh, they about the roughing the punter? Uh, the, 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 block. The, the, the block. The block. Yeah, the block. I mean, okay, the know. block. Because that's when the game kind of changed. They took advantage of that yeah, block, and that's what you got to do to the, the Yellow Jackets. Mm -hmm. When they give you opportunity, you got to score right. because can you go tit for tat? And they couldn't go tit for tat at first, but – that kind of changed it for, for the offense. Since we're talking about it, Lee County, Thomasville, let's talk about that game. The Yellow Jackets up there against the Trojans was our game of the week last night here on the Cool Channels. And, guys, it was, it was a fun game. Oh, it was, it was absolutely game. a very exciting game. I was, uh, you know, Brookwood game got over. The, your game started at 8. We were over early. So I had an opportunity to listen to Randy Young on the, on the radio for Central. And, boy, he's so in training. He yeah, is. He's, he's so much fun to listen to. He reminds me, and I, and I said it before, he reminds me of Larry Munson. Oh, I just don't think we got it in us. Oh, I don't know what's going to happen. Oh, this, oh, that, oh, my, oh, me. I love him. Randy is a great, great announcer on the radio. He's so entertaining. I don't know if we can do it. we got to hold him down one more time, just one more time. And that's Larry. That's it. all I can't Larry. Stand it. Yeah, I can't stand it. I can't stand this. I can't stand to watch. But, but it's funny that you say this is a great game because I was sitting on Lee County's side, and I tell you what, for a quarter, 
most of their fans were gone. Half of their fans had already left the stadium. You know, so well that's what I heard. So so, heard. so so they thought it was over. I'm yeah. telling you, at one point they were, it was like they were getting ready to blow them out. And then all of a sudden that block punt and things just started yep. to change. You know, so that's why I say when they if they play against Bainbridge, you know, if they play the way they played at the end of the game, the fourth quarter, yes. If they played prior to the fourth quarter, no, they would not beat a Bainbridge Bearcat mm-hmm. team. I, I just don't think I mean they didn't impress me the first okay, couple yeah. of quarters. You know, and we sit and say that they did they didn't look good. I mean the game was we thought the game was over with. Was because of with. adjustments at halftime or was it just uh you just central just kinda of backing off and going into like a preview? They manned up. They manned up and okay, they, they, they played. That's I mean, what Lee County did. They manned up. I mean, because yep. the quarterback, I mean, he just drove on his, on his touchdown run. I mean, they're running over guys. I mean, mm-hmm. I was like, ooh, ooh. You know, I mean, they just manned up. You know, now Central secondaries, they got to make some adjustments. I mean, something got to change. The ball's in the air, and you got three defenders, and they just standing there waiting on it like it's going to come to them. And then mm-hmm. also you see the receiver from Lee County just come out and here attacks the ball. You know, so those are, that should be turnovers. Right. Now, Lee should be County, turnovers. Mm-hmm. In Bainbridge, it's going to be turnovers. It's not going to be well, – Bainbridge attack the ball. True. The quarterback from Lee County made some great throws, and his receivers made some good catches. Mm-hmm. But there were a lot of guys that he just – that were wide open that he never gave them a look. Really? Yeah. So well, you there, was, think, there was though. a lot of missed opportunities. Wow. Pressure, pressure, pressure. Was on him. Oh, right. yeah, pressure there were so him. many missed sacks right. and missed opportunities. There were so many missed opportunities by the Yellow Jackets yep. to make sacks on this kid. Yep. But he had a good sense of when to step up in yep. the pocket. Yeah, I was like, oh, I said, man, he just dodged a bullet right there. You know, but I don't know if they make those same plays again against Bainbridge. I don't know if they, they come out that lucky. Well, you mentioned it. Bainbridge has a better linebacking core and a better secondary, secondary. core. So that could be issue for Lee County. That's going to be a good game. Oh, it's going to okay. be, I think it's be a real good game. Looking at that game, I know it's upcoming. I just don't believe that Bainbridge will shut Lee County out. And that's what it's going to take for Lee County to lose to Bainbridge, in my opinion. I think, I, they could, I think they could shut them out, though. I mean, because, Chris, look at the first three quarters of football with Lee County. But uh, let's look they, at it. They this, weren't man. very good. Okay, let's look at it. Defensively, yes, they gave up a lot of points to the Yellow Jackets, but. So to everybody else. So you can't. You're going to face the same offense at Bainbridge, but mm-hmm. are you telling me their backfield at Bainbridge is as good as the Yellow Jacket backfield? No, but I'm saying if, if the if Yellow Jackets can score 40 some points, then Bainbridge can score 20 something. But, they, but they've been giving up, what they've been averaging, they're giving up 20 something to everybody. 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 It ain't like it's just Bainbridge. They've been giving up points to everybody. Their yep. defense is terrible. Their defense is actually, and I don't think it's a deep, I think it's a coordinator. Anybody that's lined up in the box and gonna bring their safety six yards deep, they deserve to get beat. You know, right. and I just look at it, I look at it, they line up in the, in, in the red zone. Right. You're on the one yard line. Who you talking about you, gives up most points? Lee, 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 Lee you got Lee County, County defense in the red zone. Yeah, they what got they 21 do? points a game. Instead of them lining up on the goal line, what do they do? They got six guys that are two yards or deeper. If they cross the goal line, it's touchdown. Yep. That's an idiot. You're just wasting six guys. To me, they're not a well-coached defensive team. And, yeah, can Bayman score 27 points? They, they better score 27 points against them because they're well, not a very good is, defense. Can they go tit for tat score? I don't think they have to. I don't think Lee kind of – you're giving them a lot of credit on offense. You know, yeah, they put up some big points against some teams we don't know. But the teams that are halfway decent, I mean, they held them down. I mean, but I don't think – you. Three quarters of football, they scored, what did, they, did they score 21 points the first three quarters? And Central's defense is not that bad. Central's secondary is not very good. Their defense line, I think, is good. Their secondary is any team that they had that's a passing team that's been able with. to throw the ball on them. You know, and that's their weakness. The problem is, can you run the ball on them? It's hard to run the ball on them. But as far as throwing the ball, that's their weakness. And again, I think they got lucky as far as there's, if those were sacks, then we're talking about they don't even score 21 score. points against them. Right. I mean, you know, but... He did a great job of step, stepping up in the pocket and avoiding those sacks, you know, whether it was luck or I just think he had a good feel for it. He that. did. He's he, had a good, he had a very good feel yep. for when to step up. And then the passes, I thought they were lobbed up, you know. I mean, it's not like he just threw the ball in the money and they ran it on it. Three defenders, and what do they do? They let them catch the ball. I'm thinking, oh, my goodness, when did we stop this as a yellow jacket, you know, secondary to say, hey, guys, you know, we gotta, we're going to sit here the whole practice and we're going to play the ball. Because that's what you got to do. There's no way. It's embarrassing to have one offensive player against three defensive players and you come up with it. Offensively, you know, to me it would be embarrassing to be a defensive back. I just, I can't stand it. I'll sit there. Right. I, just, I agree with it, you. It, it, me. Now they did make a change though. From your time in oh. the backfield, you just but they, drive but, your nose. But they made, a, they made a change though. They right. moved Cotling, uh like he was to playing strong, linebacker. strong safety outside linebacker. Yeah. You know, and I, and I thought that was a difference, which I didn't like it because I think he's a little more ball hawk mm-hmm. than 26 was. So I didn't understand, you know, but because. obviously there's something they saw there to make them make that move. Because where was Lee County running the ball? They were beating them to the outside. So they move Codlin up to take away that outside. But he's game. your best pass uh, uh, defender. So that's when they were getting beat at in the middle of the field. I mean, these guys were just chunking the ball in the middle of the field. They weren't throwing it. They were chunking it, as my dad would say. They just chunked it up there, you know. <laughs> and we couldn't defend them. 
You know, so I just think I, I think Bainbridge secondary is, is, is oh, better there is, there, there's no than question the Yellow Jackets secondary. So, so it's going to be interesting to see. I just think it's, this matchup fits well for Bainbridge. I think everything that they do well, uh, Bainbridge does even better on the defensive side. So I'm going to tell you, this is going to be a good game. That's in two weeks. Right. So, so I'm, I'm looking forward I'm to that. A Bainbridge, hey, I'm we'll a Bainbridge sure. fan we'll, on that we'll, one. We'll, that's our game of the week. That's in uh, two or three weeks. I can't remember which one. That's November 2nd or November 9th. So. Is it in Bainbridge? It's in Bainbridge. Oh, that's so it. that's what we're excited about. So. The Lee kind of fans are rowdy, rowdy. Oh, they are, buddy. They are I'm going to tell you something. Rowdy, but rowdy. they're fun, though. Well, but they're fun. unless you I, I, I for they, yeah, yeah, I was say, as long as you're not against unless them. you're against them, oh, you're fine. Hey, I think they will travel. I think, they, I think they'll travel to Bainbridge. Oh, they'll travel to Bainbridge. Yeah, they may leave in the third quarter, but again, but yeah. you know. And the Yellow Jackets had no fans. Did oh, you know that? Was, that? that yeah. was a, you know what? They that's another no thing. Fans. No fans came up for Lee County. That Lee County game. That I was, was disappointing. I was shocked. I was very disappointed. They traveled to Marist, but they won't travel to to Lee County. You're leading to you're leading a region in a great game, and you got a great game against a team that could you know. Good upset you. You don't yeah. come support the team. I'm a little disappointed oh, right there. Very shocked. Yeah. That was, you know, we'll see. Guys, let's take a quick break. We have some good times here right now this week here on week nine. You can see it's getting better and better every week, fellas. Myron's back. That's why. <laughs> <laughs> but Chris is challenging me. I tell you, I like that. That's good stuff, baby. good stuff. It's very good We get intense here. Let's take a quick break here on the Toyota School Board Show, sponsored by Thomasville Toyota. So we invited kids from all over South Georgia and North Florida to come here to Thomasville Toyota, brought the TV cameras and let them roll. They had a ball. Check this out. Thomasville Toyota, where you drive home happy. Thomasville Toyota, the happy place. Thomasville Toyota, the happy place. Where you drive home happy. I'm ready to switch over to Farm Bureau Auto Insurance. Great. Wait, my old insurance agent is offering me a safe driver discount if I stay. We got you down for that. And a multi-line discount. That too. You know, some insurance companies don't give you your discounts until you try to switch, whereas we give you all the discounts you qualify for automatically. Awesome. Done. Ah! Hey, hi. Your old agent? Yeah. Awkward. Real service, real people. That's Farm Bureau Insurance. Welcome back, everybody, to the Toyota Scoreboard Show, sponsored by Thomasville Toyota. Bobby Latmore here along with Myron Guyton and Chris Guyton. You're driving home to help us. So, uh, guys, let's talk, you know, we got, it's good stuff today, good stuff. Let's go to Colquitt County. They had a great matchup against Brunswick. Brunswick jumping out to a huge 14 to nothing lead in the first quarter. First two possessions, they touch the ball, they score. Colquitt County doesn't know what hit them. All of a sudden, the second quarter, they get their back straight. You know, it's a long Since Jesse's not here, I'll say it for him. It's not where you start. It's where you finish. But <laughs> right. Colquitt County comes back in this game, winning 44-26 to to stay alive in that Region 1, 6A uh, region over there, which is huge setup right now. A lot of huge games coming up in the next couple of weeks. Um, next week, Colquitt County goes to Valdosta, which will be a big game. Be a good game. That's going to be a very good game. Lowndes played coffee last week. I just want to mention this game. Robbie Pru Pruitt, first year at coffee. He was at Fitzgerald all those years, had, you know, great football teams. He almost beat Lowndes the other night. He lost 31-29. to 29. Wow. That coffee team is something to watch out for because after Valdosta, Colquitt County's got to play coffee. So that whole, it's come, they're coming to do like a little gauntlet right now. So it's going to be interesting to see how things work out over there. Uh, that also, also wins last week against Tift County, who's not having a very good year with their first-year head coach. They win 42-7. to So Colquitt County and Valdosta both have a loss in this region. Whoever comes out of this one is going to be set up for, I think, either two or three in that region for the playoffs. It's, that's, this is a huge game coming up for them, Colquitt County, next week. But back to the Brunswick game, records were shattered in this game for Colquitt County, guys. Wow. Cole Seagraves and Daniel Mobley throw the lights out of the ball. Let me get to my page here. I'm looking at the front of the page. I understand why they don't stick with that more often. You know, it seemed like they have a lot of success at throwing the ball, but they, they keep going back to that run game. Here's, here's what's so amazing about this whole thing. You know, earlier in the season, Coach Probst said, I need more offensive production out of my team. Okay? The teams... Both teams, and the, the Brunswick runs a veer, uh, open, wide open offense as well. They're in the shotgun all the time. The Packers roll up 640 total yards of offense. Is that all? That is it. <laughs> they threw it four, out of that 640 yards, they threw 484 yards through the air, setting a new Packer record. 
between both quarterbacks. I mean, they were unbelievable. Mobley, 16 out of 20 for 286 and three touchdowns. Uh he also had two picks in the game, but we won't mention that. But that was that was early in the first quarter. That's why Brunswick went up on him pretty quick. He threw an interception and they had a fumble, um, but he threw an interception late in the game too. But you know, Mobley had a great game. He, th- I mean, for throwing for, I mean, he had ice his arm after that. Yeah, two hundred eighty-six yards, six, twenty attempts on that. Seagraves also had a big night. He was sixteen for twenty-seven for one hundred and ninety-eight yards. Um, just just throwing the lights out of it. Just throwing the lights out of the ball. I mean, it, that's. That's Coco County's offense. Yeah, again, I think that, you know, they do very well when the ball's in the air. Uh, they seem to go back to the run game. Their bread and butter, he feels like that we got to establish the run to open up a pass. I think he's, you know, he, he's old school football. You know, we're going to run and we're going to throw it when we have to, but they can seem like they can throw it, will. And right. seem like they would throw the ball more often. You know, here's, a, here's an issue for Coco County right now, and this is where you two set up. They gave up 546 yards in, in total offense against Brunswick. And who are they facing at the end of the season? Uh, that is Camden huge. County. Camden County. That is Camden huge. County. And, you know, the defense was supposed to be one of the high points. The, the one thing that the offense was a little bit down on, they didn't know what their offensive line was going to do after, you know, graduating all those great seniors. Then the defense right now comes in. They give up almost, they give up almost 600 yards, 546 yards, okay? They gave up 370. Just to let you know something here, the junior quarterback for Brunswick, okay, quarterback, ran for 370 yards against Colquitt County. Okay. Do you think at one time in the game that you need to put a spy on him? They're still trying to, they're still considering that. Unreal. Yeah. Unreal. So, that. I mean, a lot of issues for Brunswick right now. I mean, for Colquitt County on that defense right now. Brunswick's in the low part of this region. They're for, this is their, they moved up from, five, they were in 5A last year. They moved up to 6A. They were supposed to stay they, they were supposed to stay, no, I'm sorry, they were 4A last year. They made two jumps into 6A in this southeast region, uh, in the South Georgia region in 6A. So it's, it's a new region for them, new football. They're, of course, you're going to see them. They're in the lower tier. They're the last place team in this region right now. But, man, to put up offensive numbers like that, they're not going to be there long. No. Oh, no. I mean, it's, it's concerning for Colca County. Um, I like guess as a team. It just seemed like the, 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 the better teams, they're barely winning the games that they win. Uh, and the teams that you think that they're going to go in and have a breeze, um, they're scoring a lot of points against Cocker County, which I'm shocked that they're giving up, you know, those numbers. I they're am giving too. 500 yards. I you just, know, that's, that's unheard of. Wow, that's a lot. You know, but I guess, this, you know, to, to put up 600 yards is a lot also for our offense. You, got, you know, that got to be impressive. I mean, what a game to watch. <laughs> 1,186 yards, total yards between both teams. It was wow. like a tennis match. <laughs> was this a Canadian game? This? It might have been, buddy. I don't know, but it was wide open. But Colquitt County survives Brunswick, and that's exactly how the radio announcers Durwood up there, uh, Durwood Marsh up there at uh, Colquitt County, was talking about it. He said, "We survived this game because he was tired after the game, going back and forth. No huddle offenses on both sides." Wow. Mm-hmm. See, but the okay. thing is, they're not going to survive a Valdosta. They're not going to survive the Camden County. Not gonna, I just don't see them, you know, giving up. If they give up that type of yards to, to Val Oster, I mean, it's going to be a, a, a long evening. Uh, the uh, Coffee County as well. You got Camden County Camden coming County. in. I mean, that's you know, so they got to figure something out. They have quick. to figure something out quick. You know, is defensively, right. so it's going to be interesting to see what happens. Let's talk Mitchell County. The Mitchell Eagles County. flying high still. Your boy out there, number twenty-one, Mr. Yeah, Superman, Jesse's boy. That's right, Jesse loves him. Jesse loves him. You know. I understand why he's a great player. You know, they play Stewart County, which was kind of a. You know he was going to be a blowout in the first forty to nothing over Stewart County, but your boy Javante, the Jaquan Williams, Jaquan had a great game. He scored twice. Um, Kevin Pollard, Anthony Williams, Tremel Emmanuel, and Jakari Belvin all rushed for a touchdown in that game. Wow! Gave up one first down. Mitchell County's defense, Mitchell County's defense gave up one first down the whole game. Wow! And that's impressive. That is impressive. I don't wow. care who you play. You so give Stewart up one. never crossed the. Uh... The they never crossed the, the field. They, no, never, crossed they the never crossed the 50. So Eagles still in the race are three and one in region right now, which sets up a huge game coming up in two weeks. Mitchell County at Seminole County, and then Miller County plays Seminole County. So all these all it all comes down it's here. Like Seminole County gonna have their hands full. Seminole County. Speaking of Seminole County, had a great game against Calhoun County. They shut out Calhoun County up there, 38 nothing. They had a great game up there behind Martin. Jakari Martin had a rushing touchdown and a passing touchdown. 
three and zero now Seminole in that region. They they're up there with Miller County, who goes four and zero in that region last week. So. A lot of things are happening right now in this Region 1A. It's going to be exciting coming down the, to the wire yeah, here. It is an exciting region there. It is, really. Is. Really We've seen a lot of the games. Yeah. It's fun football to watch, even though it's that everybody says, well, it's just low A, no teams. Oh, no, it's good football. Oh, it is. It's good. Very good football. As I mentioned, Miller County 34-14 to over Terrell County. So that region sets up very nicely here in the next couple weeks. And at the end of the show, we'll go over all the regions here, here in a little bit. SGA. We picked SGA. Who picked Sherwood? Somebody picked Sherwood. I think Roger, Roger. picked Sherwood. Yeah. But SGA, big win over Sherwood at uh, Christian Academy up in Albany, 38-7. And we mentioned Valwood over Westwood, 48-18, uh, and Brookwood over Terrell Academy, 19-8. I just want to get those GISA scores out of the way. So. I'm not sure what happened to Roger on that. Roger had I mean, a bad week. Roger though. had a very bad week. Yeah. He picked Lee County, too. Right. Oh, you something. should have heard him up there in the box. With Lee. Hey, he, he looked at me and he said, Meyer, he said, I know, you know, you, you, you're from Thomas County Central. He said, but I really wanted you guys to lose. This game. <laughs> really? Really? He said that. And I said, I'm sorry you didn't get your wish, you know. And I started laughing. But he actually, I mean, I mean, he was like, it hurt him that, that, that Lee County lost that game. He said, it, you know, you just got to realize these guys hadn't been 6-0, and you know. I said, oh, he was, he was playing that I said, sentimental well, thing. Yeah, 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 yeah. I said, well, yeah, yeah. they hadn't been 6-1 and either, so, you know, they could spend <laughs> <laughs> Did Roger break out in the tears? He, oh, yeah, he, he sounded like it. On the, yeah, if, you like, saw, if you saw the game last like, night, he, he, was, he was down in the fourth quarter. Hey, he and then all of a sudden they sympathy. came back and it was like, Myron didn't <laughs> exist anymore because you never heard Myron talk. Because Roger was cogging the whole thing. They, were, the they started quarter. to get some energy. He, he just, got oh, he big was, time excited. He was really got, excited. I'll, I'll tell you, when he, he got mad when they did an onside kick, <laughs> he, Roger got mad. What are you doing? And Myron said, I don't know how to explain this. <laughs> Well, you know, I'm just gonna have to bring Roger a crying time. Uh, you and need it didn't to. get any better because you know the Redskins lost to the Giants. Yeah, and then he's you know, calling so, you over. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, so, so. poor fellow. You got to send him a card. One more note uh, here in Southwest Georgia that we cover: Brooks County, 42 to six over Pelham. Pelham just, I think they need to regroup and start next year already. Rough year for a rough year for Pelham. Yeah, and, uh, you know, Coach Carroll, he's gonna get him back though. You know, I just he can only go one way. I mean, <laughs> you know, I you know at the beginning of the year they were excited about everything, but I think them knowing that they'll be in this class region one, class two region, I think that really kind of just in the back of their mind they were like, what do we have to go through? They were looking ahead yeah. and not preparing for what the game, each game this week, and I think that got to them a little bit. Just my just my thoughts on it. That could be totally wrong, but Pelham, you know, they've got a good football team. I just don't think I think them. Being in Class 2A this year instead of where they should have been in 1A, I think that hurt them a little bit. No, I don't think Pillar could that. win in that Miller, that, that, that 1A with Miller and Seminole. They didn't early. I don't think they could win, you know, in the 1A class. They're early right on. Now. They've I mean, only got one yeah, win. And it's I mean, been those, against that's Bacon. a tough group right now. They're just going against some tough opponents this year. I mean, it's rough for them. It's very, very rough for them. That's a look at the scores, guys. Any questions about anything? Surprises about anything? Surprised that Roger was crying. <laughs> no, I'm not. No, I'm surprised at the Calker County game that, you know, yeah. so many yardage in that game and Calker County giving up 500 yards. That, that surprises me. Big, big time. time surprises me. Yeah. But, you know, the offense is starting to get it. You know, it's, it's, it's weird about Calker County. One week the defense is up. The next week the offense is up. And they that's not what they're known they for, though. Them. They're but known you for being consistent. Consistency when the playoffs start. Right. But, that's, but they're known for being consistent. They're known for keeping it close, low scoring game. Yep. Could be close fourth quarter and they win the game. Yep. But now, man, it's just. They're all over the place. Yep. You know, I mean, I, I wouldn't pick them uh, to be in a championship game. I mean, there's no way. I mean, with Camden County um, and even Val Auster, yep. uh, and uh, there's no way um, that I see them winning a the championship. And but things have happened. Well, when we go talk here in a little bit, we're going to come back after a minute. We'll talk about the region breakdowns again here for the regions. We'll talk about where everybody stacks up. Not much time is left based on region play. A lot of football still left to play to determine a lot of this, but we'll take a look at what the regions are doing here on the Toyota School Board Show, sponsored by Thomasville Toyota. We'll be back right after this. Thomasville Toyota, the happy place. Thomasville Toyota. Thomasville Toyota. Thomasville Toyota. Thomasville Toyota. Where you are most happy. It's a great place for sports training and keeping in shape. 
come to Fitness Life for your workout. It's convenient and it's open three hours a day. Follow your dreams, find your passion here at Fitness Life. Welcome back, everybody, to the Toyota Scoreboard Show, sponsored by Thomasville Toyota. Bobby Latmore here along with Myron Guyton and Chris Guyton. Guys, region breakdowns right now. Let's go through them pretty quick. You, you've already cost me several of my tape hours already so tonight, so we're running out of time here on our hour show. But let's talk Region 1, 6A, big region. We just talked a little bit about it before the break. Lounge 4-0, Camden County 3-0, Cockle County sitting there with 2-1, Coffee's at 2-2, two two. Valdosta's 1-2, Brunswick at 0-3 and, and Tiff at 0-4, but the top three right now, if you were supposed to get, if you were going to break them down right now and go to the playoffs right now, Valdosta's not in it. No. They've got two losses already. They lost to Coffee and they lost to Lounge. Oh, yeah. Then right. they got to play Colquitt County. That's going to be the game right there that's going to determine three and four. Right, I agree. And Valdosta shouldn't be in it. I mean, you know, they lost to Brooks County right. yeah. this year. I mean, you, you know, you, you can't lose to games that you should win. Exactly. You know, so as of right now, they should be in. they got to play their way in. They got I agree with you. Great point. That's what's so nice about high school football. you got to play your way in. But right now, it's either going to be one or two Lowndes at Camden County. Two weeks that they play that game. I don't know if it's in Lowndes or Camden County, but I'd love to see that game. Gonna game That's yeah. going to be a very good game. That determines one and two. Because there's no one else is going to beat those other two teams. I, I just think that's the way it's going to be. Colquitt County is going to sit there. If they beat Valdosta, they'll get to be the number four team. They, if they beat Coffee the next week, they'll be number three. I just don't know if they're going to get around Coffee. I just don't know if they can do that. I think Coffee's flying high right now. Yeah, I think that's a very team. good coach team yeah. over there. Um, we'll see how it works out. But a big game for Colquitt County this week against Valdosta. Region 1, 5A, Thomas County Central established himself la again last Friday night. They are 3-0 and in the region right now. Harris County is 2-0. and Like I say, maybe we're just not giving them enough. I don't think we're giving them enough credit. Yeah, yeah maybe they're a little better than we, we Well, think. what's I funny about it, third. the points they're scoring per game is 25. The points they're giving up per game, 25. <laughs> so it's make or break for Harris County each week. So you just don't know what's going to happen there. Lee County, because of their loss to Central, they go, they go down to third, one and one. But Lee County and Harris County still have to play each other. Mm -hmm. uh, Bainbridge is number, sitting at their number four with a one and two record. They still got to play Lee County. Mm -hmm. Northside Columbus and Hardaway, both no, no wins in that one. So I think their seasons are maybe done. But they, with no wins already with uh, two region games played, they're, they're close. <laughs> um, Cairo. Region 1, 4A, taking it over, 4-0 right now. Monroe, who was the number one team suspected to give Cairo pro problems, they play next week, all right? They, uh, uh, right now, Cairo goes up to America Sumter this week, but then the next week, Cairo plays Monroe. So Cairo's got two big games coming up. I think they can get by both of them, but Cairo's going to win this region flat out. Yeah, They're going to win this region okay. flat out. I, unless I they think have some major injuries. Unless something really right. just goes wrong. But Cairo's playing good football right now, especially coming into the region. You know, they got the two losses on the season, the Central and Bainbridge, but doesn't, doesn't count, matter. Right? Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. What is it? It's not how, how you start. start. How you finish. Not how you, how you finish. Let's talk Region 1, 2A. Brooks County all over this one right now. With the loss to Early County, it sets it up. I think this is going to be the final stacking order where they are right now. Brooks County 4-0, Fitzgerald 3-1, Cook 2-1, Early's 2-1. They still have to play each other. Thomasville 1-3, Berrien 0-3, and Pelham 0-3. I think Thomasville just got knocked out. With the three losses in the region, Early sitting there good with two wins. Yeah. You know, if they lose two more games, they still beat Thomasville in the head-to-head, -head. Yeah, yeah, right. so I think they're I think they're really almost mathematically out of it, unless something spectacular happens, like Pelham beats Early County later on or something. I don't know. So yeah. we'll see what happens there. But you know, Blue took uh, Thomasville in that game. He was close, but close only counts in horseshoes and hand grenades. That's right. Oh, he took Thomasville. He took Thomasville. And I kind of wanted Thomasville to win. That. Well, we talked about yeah, it. We, we wanted Thomasville. Win. Yeah, we, we all wanted to win. win but we wanted to yeah, win, they, but they we didn't. just we all took early. Right. <laughs> yeah. The numbers just weren't in their favor. I mean, yeah. It's just one of those years, or two and they're two and six on the year, and it just hasn't been there yet. You know, they just haven't got there. So, we'll, we'll, Thomasville's got a future. We'll see how it works out for them. But I think losing to Early County, they're one and three with three losses now. I think yeah. that could be it for them. Region one A, this is fun. Mm -hmm. The region, Pirates are pillaging, baby. The Pirates are pillaging. They're four and zero. Oh. Seminole County, the Roger, the Roger Indians are three and zero. Oh. <laughs> Mitchell County still in at three and one. 
Randolph plays two and two. Baconton was one and one, but they didn't play. They don't count. Terrell County's one and three, and the rest of the teams, uh, Calhoun and Stewart, they're they're out of it. But uh, it's interesting to see who's going to play one and three. And let's talk about. We'll come back to this here in a minute. But Miller County, Seminole County, and Mitchell County, one, two, and three. Okay, remember that. Remember that. GISA standings in the region. Valwood is all over this. They're three and zero. Oh. You know who else is three and zero oh in the region right now? Who might that be? SGA. Uh, they play Westwood this week. They play Westwood, who's 2-1 and one after losing the Valwood. Brookwood sitting there at number four with one and two record. They had to win to stay alive in that fourth and final spot for that playoff. They beat Terrell Academy, who's 1-3, and three, and Sherwood's 0-3. Oh so with the three losses, it's be interesting to see. If Terrell Academy can win one more game, they may be take over Brookwood. It just depends. If they're tied, the head-to-head, Brookwood will win. Right. So that's that's a big plus for Brookwood winning Friday night. you got to give them props. You have to give them props. Going back to Region 1A, the public school, it's not about the regions anymore, guys. It's about the power rankings. The right. top 16 teams go in it. Here's what's bothering me right now. Seminole won, Miller won, and Mitchell County won. But they all fell in the power rankings this week. Oh, wow. I don't know how this works. Miller County is number nine. They get into the playoffs. They were number seven. But they get into the playoffs this week at number nine. Problem is this. Seminole County is at 17. They fell from 14, 15 to 17. Oh, so they fell out of there. So if you were to go to playoffs today, they're out of it. Mitchell County sitting at 19. That's how close they are for the top 16 teams. Wow. And they got to play each other the next three weeks. So they're going to eliminate each other. It's the SEC, man. Wow. <laughs> it's the strange. SEC. So that's how this is working, and it's a little – it's it's up or down. You like it, you don't. It's We're going to find out here in the next couple of weeks. Yeah, but that's Seminole County. You know, you look at how they started the season, and it's hurting them. Well, they're four and two overall. But the two games that they lost were games that Roger Dodger, you know, assured me that they're going to win. He assured me that they're going to win those two games. Well, what bothers me about this whole thing and these power rankings, and, I'm, and I got to go back and look at the criteria again. But there's several three and three teams. Seminole's four and two. Claxton is four and two. Johnson County is five and one. There's two three and three teams that are sitting above them at fourteen and fifteen. I don't know why. Had to be. They were, I mean, who the teams were that they played, they lost against. You know, the ranking system goes on a point system right. based on, you know, the numbers of points that you give, the numbers of points that you score, based on all this other stuff. And right now, there's, there's hundreds and thousands of points separating those final six teams to get into the playoffs. You know, I think I figured out why, why those teams fell in the power rankings. They're using the old BCS computer. Uh, I'm telling you, Chris, you may be right. Maybe how, did, right. how did they come up with that system for, for 1A? I mean, why that? I'll have to go back and look, but that's what the GHSA come with. And I'll get to your power rankings criteria for the power rankings next week. I'll yeah. show you how that is. We may talk about that in the Friday night huddle this week, so we'll see how that goes. Um, one other note here, state rankings right now. Seminole, I mean, Thomas County Central moved up one from six to five. They are number five in class 5A in the state, based on the south part yeah. of the country. If you looked at the north part up in Atlanta, they're probably not number 10, no, <laughs> based on everybody's probably polling. Probably 12, 13. Well, but Central moves up, and this is the coaches poll based off of uh, the Atlanta Journal-Constitution, the coaches poll that they take. It's They're number five in the state right now, based on GHSA, GHSA stuff. So and I'm not sure, so, yeah, well, mm -hmm. number five, but I'm telling you, I, they just... They, they actually falling on my on my radar. Um, really? Yeah, I'm, I'm really concerned about the defense. I mean, they've been giving up some points. Mm -hmm. I'm really concerned defense. Well, you'll find you probably won't find out right now in the region play because they played the top two teams in the region. But uh, you're gonna see what happens with Harris County. You guys are gonna be shocked when Lee County. Lee County. It wouldn't surprise me if they didn't make the playoff. You think that? You think I just don't think. I mean, offensively, I think they got a great team. Overall, I did what I saw defensively, I just was not impressed. And Thomas, look at their, Central look at their could, record. the Yellow Jackets could put them out. Could have put them out several times. Right, could they could have put, put that them game away. away. You know, I just, like I said. I, I mean, the I, fans I, left in the beginning of the fourth quarter. <laughs> and, right, I just couldn't believe the way they were leaving, thinking, hey, guys, this is your team. You know, you, you stick with them to the end, things happen. And they almost put it out. But with the help of some mistakes I saw on the other side of the ball, plus there were some, some, some calls by the ref that were 
Very you suspect. Mean the, the phantom pass interference. Very suspect. In the first, calls. that set up the first score. Yeah, I mean, and one guy one was throwing. Hey, Roger, you probably heard him up there. He's I'm going to be tired. Uh huh. The same ref kept throwing the kept flag. Kept throwing the flag. A lot of penalties in that yeah. game again. You know, this is not, this ain't the first game we've had a lot of penalties thrown. I got. I, they want to be on TV when we're there. So they want to be recognized. I don't know. I, they see us in the stands. They, they want to, they want to not, be recognized. I don't know. Mouthing. We're not bad mouthing the officials. No, we're we just making observations. Yeah, no, we have fun with those guys. Let me tell you something. When they're on the field with us, we have a good time with them. Yeah. Yeah. And then we can we can joke back at them because the things they say to us on the field, we get in your back right now. But it's That's funny. Right. We have a good time with the officials. Don't get us wrong like we're badgering them or anything else. But we have oh, they, yeah. they're no, good period. people. Just get with everybody. I mean, good people. And there's some good football going on now. Yeah. Because we're sitting here talking about teams that we thought was going to dominate. <laughs> There's not in teams that we didn't, we didn't even think about talking yeah, about. Now we're talking about them, right? We're talking about them. I mean, we're talking about Miller County. I mean, listen, Miller, Miller. I didn't know a lot about Miller. You know, Seminole was the one that Roger always said you got to know Seminole. But now, man, I mean, everybody in that one A is banging. I mean, yep. man, it could be anybody. You know, have I, no I, idea. I, I, I want to go back to the the Lee County, Thomas County. I I, I got to give props to someone. Tim Brown stepped up and had the game. Where did he come from? Yeah. Running back to Central. You know, he came in. He's got the name. Yeah. You're right. Heisman Trophy winner. I told you, you know, fly. Yeah, fly. Yeah, fly. Just get it. Guy.